stock market, a light which comes from Allah, Most High. But when you recite Surah Tul Kahf on the day of Juma, that also gives you light. Light that will stay with you from the heavens to the earth until the next Juma. And when you have that light in your heart, then you would recognize that we live in a world today in which appearance and reality are opposite to each other. Forty-five years ago, he gave that lecture in Pakistan. Forty-five years later, it has come back to me to share it with you. There is an uncanny parallel between the world in which we live today and a world of yesterday to which the Quran has directed our attention. And so we don't need to do too much research to understand the reality of the world today, its politics and its economics, if we use that parallel that the Quran has given. It's a parallel with ancient Egypt, and we have an Egyptian here today. There was an Egypt which was godless. It declared, Ana rabbukum al I am the Lord Most High. Today the state does the same thing. The modern secular state declares precisely the same thing that ancient Egypt said. The modern secular state declares that the law of the state, the law in this constitution, is the highest law. And any other law which is in conflict with this law is null and void including God's law. That's Trinidad and Tobago's constitution. So there is, a, of course, the most godless constitution in the world, of course, is the U.S. constitution. And so there is a parallel between ancient Egypt of Pharaoh and today's modern world. In ancient Egypt, there was slavery. And the slavery was not just for political purposes, that was peripheral. Because the Israelites posed no really serious problem to Pharaoh. It's just that the Israelites had backed a non-Egyptian king in the, in the eastern delta. And the Egyptians hated that non-Egyptian rule. And so when they got rid of it, then they turned against the Israelites. But ancient Egypt, Pharaoh's Egypt, turn to slavery for economic purposes. How can you build all these pyramids? How can you build all these big monuments all over Egypt without slave labor? Today it's the same. They're not only rich, they're growing richer and Haiti. Haiti must work. Our neighbor, Haiti, that the PNM government of this country doesn't care to look towards at all. Spend your money on stadiums, but let Haiti remain in groveling destitution and poverty. They exploit the poor. They exploit Haiti right here next door. They exploit the masses of South America, the Indians, the red Indians. We here are called the West Indians. Those are the red Indians. Until a man like Evo Morales could come out of Bolivia, and a man like Hugo Chavez could come out of Venezuela to say enough is enough. We cannot stand this economic oppression. We want to take control of our resources. There is a parallel between that ancient Egypt and this modern world. It's not just 
politics and economics, it's also intimidation, violence, slaughter, crucifixion. They did it in Guantanamo. They did it in Abu Ghraib. They took Trinidad, you'll be disgusted to hear this. They took copies of the Quran and sent it down the toilet. They took our people and stripped them naked and forced them to commit abominable acts of sexual intimidation. Ancient Egypt did the same. Ancient Egypt decided that the way to deal with Banu Israel, to ensure that there is no threat to their rule over Egypt, is nisa'akum. Let's kill the baby boys, and only the baby girls will survive. And as a, as a consequence of our control of the women folk, we'll take control of that civilization, those people. They're doing the same thing today. They're hunting down every young man with a beard. There are many of those who have traveled to Trinidad for this retreat and who had a hard time coming here. But we thank the government of Trinidad and Tobago, which placed no obstacles in our holding of this retreat, other than that of a small complaint. There are some who dearly, dearly wanted to be here today. I want to mention one thing. He is from, from Niger in Africa. He's a sheikh. He's done his PhD in Islamic studies. It's not someone coming to Trinidad to violate the immigration laws to stay here. No, the man has his PhD. Sheikh Saleh Idrisa Ibrahim from Niger. And for two months, Saleh has been struggling to come here and could not get a visa waiver, even though we went to immigration and immigration promised us that they would give the visa waivers. We're not complaining too much because we are grateful that you allowed so many to come. Today we live in a world in which there's intimidation and slaughter. You're picked up from a street and you disappear in Pakistan. Why? Intimidation. We live in a world today where if you want to perform the Hajj, you are forced. It's mandatory. You must have a swine flu vaccination. We're going to resist that. We don't want mandatory vaccination. We want to be allowed to choose. Life and death are in Allah's hands. But we know what kind of a bag of tricks you have. We don't trust you. Our prophet has warned us. He said that in the last age there will be great liars. And we know about the lies. And we are not a people of patta cake, patta cake bakers, man. We say, no, you did it. We say the Israeli Mossad and the CIA jointly planned and executed 9-11. If I were to say that in New York, I might disappear. And if you say we don't have the evidence for saying that, then we challenge you. Come forward, any one of you listening on the radio today. Come forward. If you say that the American government is truthful in what happened on 9-11, while we say they're telling monstrous lies to pursue political and economic goals that are despicable, if you say that they are truthful, then come forward and let us pray to the one God, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jesus, the God of Muhammad. Allah's blessings be upon them all. Pray to him to ask him to visit with eternal curse 
an eternal punishment whosoever 